In this video, I will take you through 13 essential Microsoft Excel topics. I have included timestamps in the video description below. Feel free to jump directly to the topics you are most interested in. First, we are going to learn about using basic formulas for calculations. We are using a simple dataset here in our sales datasheet. This dataset shows sales figures for the first 5 months of the year. Let's start by calculating the total sales for this month. So I will enter the formula here. Sum and I'll drag these cells. I have entered the sum formula which adds up all the numbers in cells B2 to B6. The total cells figure is now displayed in the cell B7. You can see the formula on this formula bar here. If you want to view the formula written here, you can press Ctrl and the tilde button on the keyboard. Now you can view all the formulas on the Excel file. Let's calculate the average monthly sales. We do this using the average formula. Now I will type the average formula here and I will put B2 to B6 and this is the average monthly sale. To identify our best and weakest sales month, we use max and min function. So I will enter max and I will drag all the sales here and I'll close this parenthesis. Now I can see the max number is 2 to 5. This means April is the best month. Now I will try the mean formula. So I'll type min and I will drag all the cells here and I'll close the parenthesis. Now I can see 150 is the minimum number in this column. So the formulas are sum, average, max and min. That's how you perform basic calculations using formulas in Excel. These functions are fundamental in analyzing data set in all sizes. Now let's see how to save your Excel file. Although it's a straightforward process, there are a few details that are good to know. To save a file, you need to go to File and click on the Save option. Here you can see by default Excel saved the data to the OneDrive folder. This integration with OneDrive happens automatically when you install Office apps. So when you go to save a file, OneDrive is the default selected location. Under this other locations option, you can select a location on your computer. If I click on this browse, I can select any folder, documents, desktop or anywhere to save the file. You can also make your computer the default location for saving files. To do this, go to file, click on options, under the save tab, you can see save to computer by default. When you check this option, the default location for saving files will be on your computer. By default, it has the default location to the documents folder, but you can update this location to some other folder. And now you know how to save your Excel file either to OneDrive for cloud accessibility or direct to your computer local access. Creating and managing tables. We have a data set like this which we want to organize better. To create a table, I will select the data and here under this home tab, I can see the option format as table. So here I can pick any of the style. So I'll pick this style here. Since my data has a header row, I will keep this option checked. My table has headers. I'll click on OK. This data set is converted into a table now. You see it has a new option table design. Here you can rename the table to something else. Once our data is in table format, we can manage them easily. You can easily add new rows or new columns. You can sort the data and filter the data directly from these column headers. Excel also provides various style to format your table. Just click on the table and under this format is table, pick any of the style you like. When you click on the table, you see this menu table design. Here, if you click on this total row option, you can see it did a total for this total column. Now, here's the good thing. If I go to the table design again, and select the option insert slicer and here in the slicer i will select the region column so i'll click on this now i'll click on ok now i can see the three regions we have three regions here so if i want to see the data for only central region i'll click on this central and now i see the data for the central region only and this total row displays the total of this central region only 
now if i go to east i can see the data for east region only and for the west i will see the data for the west region only this slicer is very useful when you want to analyze some data quickly let's explore how to sort and filter data in excel sorting and filtering are the powerful tools to analyze data in excel here's our data set with the customer information let's say we want to sort this data to better understand our customers purchase behaviors so first i will go to sort and filter i will enable this filter option now you can see the arrows with the column headers to sort the data with the purchase amount I'll click on this arrow and I'll select sort smallest to largest. Now I see the data here from the smallest amount to the largest amount. By sorting this purchase amount column, we can easily see our customers purchases from smallest to largest. This helps in quickly identifying trends or outliers. Now let's filter our data to see only those customers who purchase product A. So I'll click on this arrow on this product column. I can see. Here we have two products, product A and product B. So I will select only product A here. So I'll uncheck this product B and I'll click on OK. Now you see the data for the customers who purchase product A. Now I will clear this filter from this product column. Now I want to filter the purchase amount with custom value. I want to see the list of the customers who purchased with an amount more than 10. So I'll click on this purchase amount arrow and I will select number filters here I will select greater than so here I'll enter 10 and click on OK now it shows the data for the customers whose purchase amounts are more than 10 not only greater than you have less than between equals greater than and equals and so on pivot tables allows us to summarize and analyze large data sets efficiently we will use this realistic sales data set for our demonstration to insert a pivot table I will select all the data here and now i'll go to the insert tab and here i have the option to insert pivot tables i'll click on this it shows where do you want to create the pivot table in this existing worksheet or a new worksheet so i'll select new worksheet and i'll click on ok here i see all the column headers for our pivot table let's analyze sales by region and product so i'll drag this region to rows product to columns and sales amount to values this organizes our data showing the total sales for each product in each region pivot tables are interactive you can sort and filter the data to focus on a specific region or products here under this row labels i can view the data for east region only or i can view data for east and north and so on when i select all here i can sort the region from a to z or z to a you can also change how data is summarized here you see the sum of all the sales amount if i want to display the average instead of the sum then in this value section i'll click on this sum of sales amount and here under value field settings i will select average and i'll click on ok now it shows the data in average instead of sum also I can view the count of the sales data. Now it shows the count of the sales data according to the region and the products. Let's try conditional formatting. It allows us to highlight or format sales based on certain criteria. Here is our data set. We'll start applying the simple conditional format to highlight top performing sales. So I'll select the sales column. Now under this home tab, I'll select conditional formatting. You see top bottom rules. I can select top 10 items and I will select the default formatting and I'll click on OK. Now Excel highlights the top 10 sales in the sales column. This instantly draws our attention to the highlighted figures. Now let's try a different conditional formatting. In this case, I'll select the profit column and under conditional formatting, I'll select data bars. Under data bars, I'll select a style. I'll select this and I'll make this column with a little bigger and here it visually represents the profit amounts making comparison more intuitive. It shows red for the negative profit and green for the positive profits. Now let's try a different conditional formatting. So in this case I'll select the quantity column and again I'll go to the conditional formatting and here I'll select highlight sale rules. I'll select greater than and I'll select 5 here. For the formatting, I'll select red border and click on OK. You see where the quantity is greater than 5, 
It has a red border for the cell. Excel's VLOOKUP is incredibly useful for pulling specific data from a large data set. Imagine you need to find the salary of a specific employee from this extensive list. Scrolling through the each row is time consuming. That's where VLOOKUP comes in handy. So I'll pick an employee ID from this employee ID column and I'll write it here. Let's type 105. I want to display the salary for this employee ID here. So I'll type VLOOKUP. The lookup value is this employee ID. I'll click on this. I'll type a comma. The table array is from employee ID to the salary column A to E. Now I will type a comma. Now the column index. Column index is the column where the salary data is present. In our case, the salary data is in column E. So I'll type 5. That is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now again, I'll type comma. Now I'll select exact match because I want to match this employee ID exactly what we have here. So I'll select false and I'll close this. So the salary for this employee ID is 51723. You can see it here. If I change this employee ID to something else, let's change it to 112, 112. And you see the salary is now changed. That is 43560. VLOOKUP is perfect for quickly pulling specific information from a large table. It's essential for reports, financial analysis, and much more. Let's explore how to use if and if else statement in Excel. These logical functions are crucial for making decisions based on your data. So here we have the employee performance data set. We will use the if statement to assess whether each employee met their sales target. So here I will write the if formula. I'll start with if and I'll select D2. D2 is the actual sales. I'll type greater than and equals and I'll click on sales target. Now I'll type a comma and I will type the value if true. So I'll type met if the value is true and not met if the value is false. Now I'll close this. Now I'll drag this for all the rows. Here you can see not met and met where it found the data is more than or equals to 500. It gave the met otherwise it gave not met. Now let's see the if else statement. I'll type if d2 greater than equals to c2 then I'll do excellent and I'll type a comma. Now here I will type another if. If d2 greater than or equals c2 multiplied by 0 0.8 if the 80% of the sales target is matched. So I'll put good in that case. For all the other cases, I will type needs improvement. I have to close two parentheses because I have two if statement here and I'll close this. And now I'll drag this for all the rows. And here you see the excellent for the data where we have more than 500. Excellent, good because it met the 80% of the sales target and needs improvement where it doesn't match the excellent function or the good function. This if statement is incredibly useful for categorizing data based on conditions. Now let's see the data validation for error prevention. Here we have a data set for employee information. Let's apply data validation to ensure that the data entered here follows the certain rules. First, I will select the department column and now I will go to the data and I will select this data validation option here. So for this column, I want to keep the new values either HR, marketing, IT or sales. So here under this option, I will select the list option here and I will enter the data separated by comma HR, marketing, IT, sales. Now I will click on the OK button. So now when I click on the other cells in the same column, I see the drop down. And in this drop down, we only have these four data. This means we cannot add other data here. Like if I enter some other data here, it will show us the error. We have created the rule for this column. Now let's create another data validation rule for this salary column. Here I'll set a validation rule for the salary range. This will prevent accidentally entering unrealistic salary figure. So I'll enter this salary column. Now again, I'll go to the data validation option. Here I will select decimal and I'll select less than. Here I'll enter 20,000. I'll click on OK. 
if I enter a data in this column that is more than 20,000, we will see the error. Let's try it. 21,000 and press enter. It doesn't match the validation rule. When I add another number that is less than 20,000, like 2100, it accepts the data. So this is how the data validation works. You can create multiple data validation rules for the columns you have on your data set. Let's learn about printing and page setup in Excel. This step is crucial for creating professional and readable reports. Here we have monthly sales data. To print this, first we need to ensure it's presented well on paper. Under the file, select print. Here you can preview how your document will look. You can choose the printer and set the number of copies here. Now I'll go to the data set again and here I see the data only prints from column A to column E. It doesn't print the profit column. So we need to set up the page. Under page layout, you have option to select margins. Here I can select wide margin, narrow margin or the normal margin. Also, we have the option to add custom margins. Here I can add custom margins to the left, right, top and bottom. Okay, for this I will keep the default normal margin and for the page size, I'll select A4. You can select a size from this list of sizes. Also, you can add a custom size here. And for the orientation, you can select portrait or landscape. If you are having difficulty to fit the data into the page, then you can go to the view tab. Here, you see page break preview. Here I can see the profit column doesn't fit inside the page one. So here you can quickly drag this column in blue here to write, then it will shrink the data into page one. Now, if I go to the file and print again, now I can see the profit column to the printable data. Let's now focus on some basic but incredibly useful text function in Excel. Concatenate left and right. These functions are great for manipulating text data. So let's try the concatenate first. Let's start by combining the first and last name into a full name using the concatenate function. Here I will type the column name to full name. Now I'll start writing the concatenate formula, concatenate and I will merge the first name and last name. For the text one I'll click on A2 and I'll type a comma and I'll type text 2 that is the last name B2. Now I'll close this and press enter. Now here you see it doesn't have a space between the first name and last name. So what I'll do I'll add a blank space using the double quotation. So I'll type quotation, type a space, quotation and comma and press enter. Now I see it has a space between the first name and last name. You can view the formula here on this formula bar or you can always press the control and the tilde key. It will display all the formulas on the Excel workbook. Now I'll drag this for all the data. Now let's use the left function to extract the first initial from each first name. I'll start typing the formula left and I'll select the text that is first name. I want to bring the initials. Here you see number of characters. So I want to put one because I need the initials only and I'll close this and I will drag this for all the rows. So you see it brings the data from the left because the formula is left A2 and 1. It is grabbing the data from this cell from the left side. If I do the opposite, if I type right and use the same text and I'll do 1 again and I'll drag it for all the data. Now it is grabbing the data from the right of all these cells. These text functions concatenate left and right are simple yet powerful for text manipulation in Excel. When you have a large amount of data, navigating through them can become challenging. That's why Excel's fridge pan feature is very much powerful. Let's see how this works. So here we have a data set like this is sales but when I scroll down I don't know if it is sales or something else. So in that case we can use fridge pans. For that I'll go to the view tab. Here you see fridge pans. Here I have three options fridge top rows, fridge pans, or fridge first column. I'll use fridge top row. Now the top row of this data set is frozen. When I scroll down, I can see the header all the time. 
Similarly, when you have multiple columns like you have 20 or 30 columns and you want to view the first column all the time, in that case, you can use the freeze first column function. This function will freeze the first column. You see here, I do not have a lot of columns but still I can view how the freeze column function works. Let's see the last topic for this video today that is comments and notes. In Excel, you can write comments and notes for any of the cells. Here on this column D, for the cell D1, I can write a comment. So for that, I right click and I'll select new comment. Here I need to write the comment. Needs improvement. Post the comment. So how this comment work? When I share this data with someone, like if I send this data to my team using email or, or anything else, they will see the comment when they hover the mouse on this cell. And also they can add replies. You see the reply box here. They can add replies here. I'll try a demo reply and I'll click on this button. Now it shows the reply in a thread. You will see the name for the person who added the comment and the replies. Similarly, you can add notes for any of the cell. So when I right click, I'll select new note and I can write the note here. So when I have something to say about a cell, I can just write a note here. And that's it. And now when I move the mouse to this cell, I can see the note here. You cannot reply to a note like you can for a comment. You see the difference how the cell with the comment and with the note looks. If you enjoy this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up and don't hesitate to leave your questions or feedback in the comments. And I'm here to help. Thank you.